welcome to Tarantulas with Shanti. Today I am going to begin a series of lessons or just informative videos that will talk about the anatomy of spiders and tarantulas. Now today is just going to be very basic. I'll be going over the model that I'm using. And what I'm using here is this 4D Master Tarantula Spider by Vision. It is actually considered a puzzle, um, an anatomical model, and it is basically a toy. So uh, it was probably between $20 and $30. You can find these online. It uh, is not, you know, really high quality, but it'll serve uh, for the basics of what I'm doing at this point. Uh, I will go over this model with you briefly, showing you each part, and then I will go more in depth as the video series carries on. So let's get started. Here we have the Brachypelma hamori, and this is the Mexican red knee tarantula. That is what this model is supposed to be. And um, first I'm going to take a look at the legs on this guy. Now these legs are removable. I'm going to take this bigger leg right here, the hind leg, off. We're going to look at the outside structure of the leg. So beginning where it connects to the body, this is called the trochanter, where the leg connects to the body. Then the next seg segment that we have is called the femur. After the femur is the patella, and then the tibia. This is called the basotarsus. This is called the teletarsus. And then on the end, this model does not have them, but you can see your tarantula's claws. Sometimes uh, those are also referred to as a tarsal claw. And this part of the leg, the teletarsus, can also be referred to as the metatarsus. For this, um, we're talking teletarsus, basotarsus, tibia, patella, femur, and the trochanter which is the part that just connects onto the body. So inside of a tarantula's leg, here's what we're looking at inside. These are nerve cords in here. So this nerve cord is actually connected to the central nervous system on the tarantula. So we will get into that in a minute. All of the legs have the same structure, except the um, <clears throat> pedipalps are a little different. They are shorter. They have a lot of nerve endings. They use them for, for feeling everything and for helping them eat. So once again, trochanter, femur, patella, tibia, basotarsis, teletarsis, and claws on the end. So let's take a look at some other parts of the body. Uh, so the tarantulas do not have a body like humans, obviously. I mean, we've got the abdomen. This part is the abdomen right here. Um, it's also referred to as the opisthosoma. And then this is the carapace. Now on the carapace, you will notice your tarantula has an indentation. That is called the central apodeme. And then between the abdomen and the carapace, you will see a very tiny little thread that seems to be holding the two parts of the tarantula together. Sometimes you'll see this when they're doing a happy dance, and that is called the pedicel. So then what we have here, this part of the tarantula is called the prosoma. 
Now the prosoma is on the carapace. It's part of the carapace. So right here is the prosoma. And right here is called the ocular tubercle. So the eyes are located on the ocular tubercle. And then we have the chelicerae. The legs on a tarantula, again, we refer to them in this order. The pedipalp, this is leg one. This is leg two. This is leg three. And this is leg four. So pedipalp, leg one, leg two, leg three, leg four. And as you can see again, all of these legs have the nerve running down the center. And they are all connected to the central nervous system in the tarantula's body. Now we have the spinnerets. Everyone's familiar with these spinnerets. And the silk glands are located inside the body. And the tarantula's brain is located in the carapace. So let's take a look at one of the chelicerae. So the chelicerae is this part right here. And here is a fang. The chelicerae has a venom gland, in, gland inside. And of course, this delivers venom into the fang. So you can see the venom gland extending into the fang, and here you can see it in the chelicerae. Pretty neat. So that covers the legs um, and the abdomen or pistotoma, the carapace, uh, and the prosoma, the ocular tubercle. So next I want to talk a little bit about the bottom of the tarantula, the underside. So let me get this turned over and we will continue there. Let me tell you too about plurals and singulars um, on some of these scientific names. The two chelicerae, they are referred to chelicerae as two of them, chelicera as one. I would imagine it would be the same with spermathicae. Spermathicae, the two spermathica would be one single of the spermathicae. So now taking a look here, what we have are the book lungs. And this is not exactly anatomically correct because there should be a pair of large book lungs, which is divided down the center. This is called a spiracle, and then there should be another set of book lungs here, a smaller one. So there are larger ones farther down and smaller ones. Then right in the center is the epigastric furrow. That could actually be this way. That is for reproduction. Um, it's also where you would uh, sex them if you were looking at the vent and attempting to sex them that way. Here we have spinnerets. And this is called the epigynal plate. Right here, extending up next to the coxa. These are coxa. And that's where all the legs attach to the coxa. This is the labium. And this is the sternum right here in the center amidst all of these eight, well, there's actually 10 coxa because you have two coxa that go along with the um, pedipalps. Coxa, coxa. Um, and then there are two little slits and they're not on this model, but they are on the sternum. Those are called sigula. And right up here, Right between these two coxa that extend to 
the pedipalps. This is called the labium. And the little tiny dot in front is called the labrum. So the labium and the labrum. And this is part of the mouth. We got book lungs. We've got the sternum. We've got coxa. We've got the labium, the labrum, the epigastric furrow, the epigynal plate. There are spiracles dividing the book lung. And upside down, the way that we're looking at legs, we count them leg one, leg two, leg three, and leg four. Of course, we're looking at a chelicera or chelicerae. Here's our fang and our pedipalps. Tarantulas have teeth, and this model actually has some teeth underneath. This does aid in chewing up their food before they put it into their mouth. And another thing that I wanted to mention was the opening where the venom comes out is a little bit up from the tip and on the outside curve of the fang. So the venom comes out of a small hole right about there, not exactly in the tip or behind it, but a little bit up on the outside curve of the fang. So here again, there's the venom gland. You can see that a little better. It extends down into the fang and it delivers out of a small, small hole right up from the tip. Okay, so the next part of this presentation, we're going to deconstruct the tarantula um, and take a look at what is inside. So I've removed the cap off of the abdomen here. And what we are going to take a look at first is the heart. This is the heart. Tarantulas don't have hearts like humans. We have what is called a closed circulatory system. Our um, blood is delivered through our arteries and veins. Now, tarantulas do have something that is like an artery, but the whole system that they use is very different from what humans used. It's called an open circulatory system. So, in effect, if you have ever opened the abdomen of one of your tarantulas, you probably see that there's just a lot of goopy, custard-like stuff in there. And they do not have blood like people. They have what's called hemolymph. And the hemolymph actually soaks out into the body. And that's what an open circulatory system does. It does have a means of delivering and flowing blood back through and cleaning it and oxygenating it, but not like we have in people. I will go over that more in more detail in a future lesson. Um, I'll use this model, but I will explain to you more about how the circulatory system in tarantulas and spiders actually works. But for now, we're just gonna look at these parts. So the heart is here. These are like arteries. These, div these will release the hemolymph into the body. And now underneath here, extending down from the heart, you have the book lungs. They have tubes coming from the heart and the book lungs are washed by the hemolymph and there's an exchange of gases that takes place here and oxygenates the hemolymph. So what else is there in the abdomen besides the heart? So if we take the heart away, underneath, this is the intestine, intestine the intestines or intestine, whichever you prefer. And so the heart sits on top of the intestine. 
with the book lungs. Whoops, it goes this way. So it sits on top like this. So the heart, the book lungs, the intestine, and this right here is the ovaries. So let's remove the heart and book lungs. Let's take a little bit closer look at the intestines. So all of these here are the gastric cecca. The intestine part is basically the center. And this is called a sterical pocket. Let me take this off. And now we're left with the ovaries. This is actually the sperm receptacle right here. So you see that this would fit into the abdomen right there. And that is where the epigastric furrow is. So you can see that that would be where the sperm would be received into, into the, uh, the spermathicae would be in there. So I don't know if they mean for this to be spermathicae, but anyway, sperm receptacle. And then what we're looking at inside, we have our spinnerets here. So these right here are silk glands. So that's where the silk is produced. But this is part of the central nervous system here, connects everywhere. And then if we remove this part, now we're looking at the ocular tubercle. This is the interior. So those are the eyes. They're sitting right up top. And these are the optic nerves in blue. So this green part, these are arteries. The arteries run right through the center of the body and through the abdomen. And uh, we talked about this earlier, which is the little tiny piece you see connecting the two parts of the body. So this is, uh, the arteries run through there. That's kind of like a house for the arteries to keep them safe. Um, and so the, the arteries connect to the heart. Again, the heart would be here. So here we have the end that would go connecting to the other part of the arteries that are in the carapace. So we're gonna lift this off. Now, underneath these arteries, we have this orange piece. These are the mid-gut branches. And underneath here, we also have the sucking stomach. And you can see it right in between all of these arteries. Now that's uh, the part that comes up and attaches. Uh, when you see a molt, you see the sucking stomach. It's part of what is molted. I don't know if that would explain why some tarantulas may not eat after a molt. I mean, may have trouble and may actually pass away because they have had a problem when they have molted out some of their internal organs. If you have inform more information about that, yeah, please comment below. And uh, so we're getting into these, these nerves here and everything, and this is the brain. So we've got the brain and the optic nerves, all of these nerves here, very important. So optic nerve, the brain right here. So the eyes are sitting on top of the brain. And this right here is the central nervous system. So you have a very close connection here with the central nervous system and the brain and the, the ocular nerve cord that goes to the eyes. So let's put that back in. You can see where these nerve cords connect to each leg and also 
to the pedipalps and to the other part of the body, the abdomen. So here we've got our, our sucking stomach. Then we have our mid-gut branches and the sucking stomach right here. Sucking stomach is down here. It's underneath. There's a little part right there. That goes in right over the top. of the central nervous system in the brain. If we reconstruct this, we've got the ovaries and this is the gut. And the heart with the arteries and the book lungs. And it all goes in like that. I want to thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope that this has answered some of your questions about your tarantula's anatomy. The next lesson will go more in detail about some of the organ systems and body parts. So I uh, look forward to seeing you next time and hope you have a great day.